Jackie, this is one of the uh, one of the very few American uh, uh, crews in this race. Andrew, Junior Lewis. Although I don't know that we can call you Junior anymore now that you have a kid. No. How are you, brother? It's good to see you. Good to see you, man. How are things? Oh, they're really good. They're really good. I was I was super uh, uh, bummed out that you weren't here, and I'm going. He's on all the on all the posters, and he's on everything. Where is he? And then it turns out that you missed the race because your son or your daughter was born that day. Is that right? Yep, uh, daughter. Uh, her name is Taylor. Um, you know, we tried to plan everything to make it work that I could do the import race and all that, and I had to call Ian up about two days prior to the import race, and things uh, weren't going as planned, scheduling the baby coming out, and uh, they were able to pass with the race committee that it was okay to skip the import race and do the leg, and yeah, it all worked out real, real bum, but I mean, the team won. I was able to watch it at 2.30 in the morning at home in Hawaii, so it wasn't all bad, but it, uh, um, it was just great. The team supported me not being there for the import race. They knew how important it was for me to be there for Danielle, and it all worked out. I can't, I can't even imagine the emotions of, of first having your, 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 your daughter get born, your first child, yep. and then watching your team uh, uh, win. And, and obviously, you know, for a year you sit there and wonder, do we have the right boat? Do we have the right team? And you guys go and pull out six points. Oh, uh, it's great. I mean, I, I think a lot of it was for being a later team as well, for the shore team and the, I mean, everyone that works in the tent, to, you know, uh, who scrubs the bottom of the boat. It was just, for morale reasons, it was really important. I think that we did well. And, you know, I, I know, like a lot of people say, that wasn't a, a test to, we're not, you're not going to win the Volvo Ocean Race winning that, but it was just a real good thing for, uh, mentally and just a good way to send the boat off and hopefully we have a good leg you know we're i think everyone's excited and knows the boat can do well yeah yeah so so 24 hours uh, to go right now and as we're looking out here you know just uh, offshore we've got 20 knots solid and much bigger stuff offshore 100 knots out at gibraltar <laughs> right now roughly um do you think that uh do you think that um that uh that your boat has the right choices for this first leg, and, and how does it stack up, you think, against the, the FAR boats in terms of sail and uh, design choices? You know, I think uh, from the first race in 0506, where obviously us on the ABM boats are so extremely different than the FAR boats, I think everyone's got it pretty right now. Um, I think the designers, there's the little things that are, you know, different, the subtle things, but I think everyone's going to have their moments, and it's going to be a real tactical and just who you know, pushes the hardest and the smartest and who knows when to throttle back and just th the same old thing, but it's just, it's, uh, it, the playing field is just really level now, I think, you know. It is, but there are some, I mean, there are some design choices that aren't tiny, you know, uh, um, just even walking the docks, you've got a significantly different deck, uh, camber, and you've got uh, quite a bit more freeboard on Abu Dhabi than, than some of the other boats. I know you, you told me that, that the, the underbody is uh, a little bit more rocker, and do and, um, you think that, that that's going to help you if you've got three days of beating into 25 to 40 win uh, not wins? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, every team's we've got our little things that we've changed and thinking that, you know, if our deck's a little rounder, maybe less water will spray over the deck to wipe us out and all that. And, yeah, no, I, I definitely think there will be areas that, say, Telefonica might be really fast reaching because they opted to just all the sails are flatter or just the way they position things on the boat. And we went, well, we can deal with being a little slower there, but we want to be faster here. So I, um, there's, don't get me wrong, there are definitely differences, but I think it will be a lot closer than it ever was, definitely, yeah. Uh, obviously, you um, uh, you know the, your first Volvo uh, with ABN2, the famous uh, kids' boat. Um, do you feel like you've now really passed into the the, uh, the 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 role of a vet, or you know, with guys like uh, Slattery and other guys, are, are you still kind of a nipper? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, there, there's times where uh, um, I, I'm definitely. I think I'm a lot safer now because I just didn't know. I was like, oh, maybe it's just, I just thought I was supposed to be out of control all the time and scared for your life. That's just how it is. <laughs> but now I think I've got a lot more, like a better idea, like, oh, damn, we got a plenty on right now. We need to start thinking. But I, I there's tons to learn from everyone. And uh, everyone, I, I, everyone's got plenty of respect for me and I have plenty of respect for them. And it's all, you know, it's all working out great. And we got such a solid group of guys. I mean, this guy's this huge experience from every class. And, you know, now that, it's so cool sailing with the Rob Greenhow and Justin that we were teammates, but we we're just on different boats. And you know, I, I get along with them all great. And I was so honored to get that phone call from them. And those are the those are the guys that said, "Oh, you know, we need one more under 30." And you know, Andrew's still under 30. And we 29, right? 29. Yeah, getting it from those guys is just awesome. You know, it's really good. Yeah.
Yeah. It's great. It's great news, and uh, you know, uh, uh, you've also got another American on board, and Nick uh, as your media crew member, who's a really fun guy. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you guys are going to have a good time. You know, um, we were having a chat with Jerry Kirby up in the uh, Discover Ireland breakfast a little uh, a couple minutes ago. We were talking about the Rambler, yep. um, which you used to sail on the uh, uh, you, know, you used to sail on the on the other Rambler. Yep. Yeah. But um, uh, between that, the wing nuts thing, some other keel uh, disasters recently, uh, you know, is there something new going into, in, through your head when you're in the big stuff on a reach? And, and does, does that figure into your brain a little more like it never did before? Yeah, you know, I think these boats are built a little more um, overkill. Uh, they've always said that we could hit something a little harder and, and re hopefully recover through it a lot better. But they've done a lot of safety changes in the last minute for us. They've added um, a grab bag on deck, so right on the back of the boat. If some, you know, if it all went bad and you know we had to grab it, we got a grab bag full of flares. It's got a sat phone, so yeah, you know, you can call someone the life raft, you know. But um, uh, it's all they they definitely have taken the Rambler thing to heart, and they, and you know, I can't tell you how that felt hearing that when we're in the fast net. Um, we passed Leopard, saw him in the middle of the night across our stern trying to get a jib down, and you know, Ian came on deck and he's like, "Well, Rambler's tracker's not going, you know, so you know, but trackers are going on and off," and then. You know, getting the news the next morning that we passed 200 yards from them, didn't even see them. You know, Juggy and all those guys are sitting there waving, and you know, I mean, we just had no way. Of, I mean, I mean, I mean, these are your friends. You know, yeah. these are guys you've done hard ocean miles with. I mean, Rambler was my my thing from the day one. It got launched when I got a call from uh, Ken Reed about sailing with them um, uh, when the first day they launched it, and I did every single thing up till pretty much um, I started this. You know, and I and I done deliveries on it, everything and it was just hearing that just and I was I can't believe I'm so glad nothing happened but I seriously cannot believe you know they're so lucky the way that it worked out that the like Joe Finelli was in the water you know 20 years of Coast Guard training keeping it tying everyone together and just I mean the story but, but, but luck I mean you know skill sure but luck there's a so big I mean two hours later and uh, we've got one of the biggest tragedies in, in sailing history um, unbelievable yeah unbelievable I, I'm I, I I couldn't wait to call those guys, and uh, Justin Slattery's dad actually drove down to Baltimore to see all those guys, and we were able to get a hold of Jerry. And I, that guy, you've never heard Jerry Kirby sh sh uh, shaking up any time in your life. And he had, he was trembling on the phone telling me how it all went. And it, was, it was so emotional. It was, blew my mind. Yeah. And, 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 and again, I think what, what blew him away, and uh, really any monohull guys get blown away by the, by the fact that, that it went over so fast because of all the, wa all the water in the tanks, and, yeah, yeah. and it went over so fast. And these boats, they don't build like an open 60 with an escape hatch in the back where you can go crawl back in. And we, and we do. You so do. Yeah, exactly. which is, and it makes you think you would almost take your time a bit more get your shit squared away and work your way out of the back of the boat and so you know you can yeah yeah and we've and we've planned you know we've been in and out of the back of the boat so we know and i remember on abn we had to do a full ro roll test the boat was completely turtled and i remember how high it f floated with the back hatch so you could get in and out of that if you had to yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean it's amazing what you can get out of when you need to yeah so so i think uh what's really interesting to me you know uh also being sort of married and uh, thinking about starting a family is that you know your first uh nine months you're going to have very very little time seeing your daughter grow up how does that feel uh you know I, I got a really supportive wife she's not a sailor at all but you know she did 12 years in the air force and she knows how it is to be deployed and be away and all that and uh she was actually a big reason why i did i'm doing the race she pushed for me to do it and i um uh, my dad about uh, six eight months ago, had to get a pretty major surgery, and um, and that's why I had to leave Puma. And it was a real hard choice for me, and I had to go back and help the family business. And um, you know, six eight months went by, and my dad got cleared up. And you know, he goes, he could tell that I I still want to do the race and things. And I just Puma hired uh, Rome Kirby, which I'm still a great guy and all that. And um, I, I was able, lucky enough to be able to, you know, still have time to um, join another team, which all worked out good. You know, there's no hard feelings anywhere, and it was, um, I think everyone understood, you know, his family comes first, and I had to go help my mom with the family business, and, but it's all worked out. Dad's good. He'll be in Abu Dhabi and all that, and, nice. um, yeah, but, you know, I, Danielle's got a good family support at home with, and, yeah, no, it'll be it'll all work out good. If you didn't have that, I don't think I could have done the race. So yeah. it was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they, they talk. I mean, you, you can see it just looking around. But they talk about how the Volvo Ocean Race, the Whitbread, whatever, um, sucks you in, and you you just in it for life. Once you're in it, you think you're going to be in this thing for a while longer? Oh, uh, we'll see. You know, I I got dreams of it would be so neat to bring something out to Hawaii again, even if I was involved with the team or not, or just more involved with just getting it there. I mean, I can't tell you how good of a venue it is, and stopping these boats in Hawaii. 
for an import race and just getting there. I don't know how you'd have to make the leg work. Maybe you could sail up to San Fran afterwards or uh, that. But, um, you know, I, I, I think it'd be really cool to have an um, American team and seeing that, you know, uh, all-American offshore team and all that is, I, I think there's some future in it, but it's, it's hard. You know, I, it'd be, I just wish there'd be a more American stops. It'd be great to see. You know, it's 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 hard saying there's you know there's only two or three Americans around here. It's um such a good sport, and but yeah, you do get sucked in. Yeah, yeah. you definitely do, and it's. Well, look, we all know that um, that uh, certainly thanks to the cup and some other developments, uh, uh, American interest is is growing pretty damn quickly in sailing, and uh, hopefully that that'll that'll spread over to to, to the Volvo in the future. Yeah. Look, I, I you got work to do. I'm freezing my ass <laughs> off. So, brother, look, if I don't see you, have a great great definitely. leg. I hope to see you down the road, and uh, yeah, yeah. just uh, just kick ass, keep it up, and uh, we love watching you out there. Congratulations yeah. on your baby girl. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, no good worries. good talking to you again. Cheers. <laughs> all right.